Hi, I'm Charu from Embody Tantra, and I am so excited because I'm in preparation for an upcoming virtual online event for women to explore self-pleasuring in a totally new way. That's coming up April 2nd, 2020. So if you're watching this and you are interested in joining, make sure you go to embodytantra.com or contact us info at embodytantra.com and we will make sure to get you the link for that event. As I was preparing, I was getting excited about things that I wanted to make sure those who are joining the class do to prepare themselves to experience the most pleasure possible. And what I realized is that some of these things are things that I can offer to our whole community. And whether you are a woman or whether you're someone who makes love with women, uh, I think that these practices or being aware of these practices will be valuable to you. So as we're leading up to the event, I'm going to be releasing some of these videos to help you connect on a deeper level of where you are, how you have become who you are sexually, and how we can start expanding the possibility around that. One of the things that is just simply true of being alive in our culture right now is that we are completely disconnected from our bodies. And of course, if you have already done some work to start feeling more connected to yourself, maybe that's not entirely true for you, but even those of us who are exploring and feeling really sex positive or feeling doing certain embodiment work or doing certain therapies to help us understand ourselves better and connect to ourselves better, there is still a huge gap between the how alive we're able to feel in our bodies, what we understand about ourselves and our sexuality, and maybe the whole truth. And that doesn't have to be a bad thing. In fact, to me, what that says is there's just so much more to explore. So whatever you're experiencing, whether that's, you know, tons of pleasure and great sex, or whether that's shut down, trauma, um, feeling unsafe sexually, not experiencing orgasms, wherever you are on that spectrum, the great news is that there is room to grow. And, you know, for myself, I've been invested in uh, self-exploration and sexual exploration as my full-time job in many respects uh, for, I, what is it, like almost 15 years now. And that's not counting all of the exploration I did before then. And, um, and it is, it's consistently new. There is consistently new territory um, that I discover for myself new ways to go deeper, new ways to be sensitive in my body. And so it's a really exciting adventure that um, I'm so glad for those of you who are joining me. And one of the things that I find in this world where there is such a deep disconnect is that most of us have been introduced to sexuality in ways that were um, either traumatic or fragmented or based on ideas of who we were supposed to be, what we were supposed to do, how we were supposed to show up. Um, it could be based in moments where there was extreme shame. And so we have, there are lots of things that play a role in the building block of how we have become who we are sexually, what we bring into the bedroom on our own or with a partner. Um, that that has been really influenced by messages we've received throughout our lives and then experiences that we've had throughout our lives. And so understanding those messages and, the, and investigating those experiences, which may be something we haven't done uh, maybe ever, is something that can really support us in coming into a deeper relationship with ourselves and with our sexual selves. So this is the first assignment that I want to invite you to explore if you're watching this video and definitely if you're going to be joining us for the Women's Self-Pleasuring event. Either way though, what I want you to explore is how have you become who you are sexually? And how I want you to do that is to begin journaling about your sexual history. So what does that look like? Well. 
It begins with what is the first memory that you have about something sexual? So maybe that's walking in on your parents and not understanding what you saw. Maybe that's uh, playing you show me yours, I'll show you mine as a child. Maybe your experience felt amazing. Maybe it was really stifling. Maybe you were someone who was lucky enough to explore self-pleasuring when you were really small and experience orgasms when you were small, as many people do, and maybe you were shamed or maybe you were celebrated. Um, but whatever it is, what the this invitation is to really think back, what was that first thing? Was it a book you read? Was it finding a stack of Playboys and um, in your uncle's house? Um, may or may not have happened to me um and and start journaling from that very first memory of something that sparked your awareness that sexuality is a thing that exists and start journaling about that and this is something that might go on for you for days maybe you want to sit down for an hour and journal all the way from that first experience through every sexual experience you remember or influence sexually influential experience you remember all the way through to present day or maybe you just want to journal a few minutes a day and you remember a little more each day maybe maybe your first kiss you know i um this is a very intimate and vulnerable um share for me i remember um, my first kiss at uh summer camp i got i had my first boyfriend at summer camp and I remember I hated kissing him. It was that kind of, um, you know, first make out thing where you just like stick each other's tongues in each other's mouth and like, I don't know, tongue kung fu with each other. And, uh, and I did not like it at all. And I was very disappointed because I was really excited to be exploring kissing. And um, I remember going to my camp counselor and she and telling her like oh i hate kissing it's just so and um and she said well you know honey you don't have to do it if you don't like it it's okay which what an amazing message you know this probably 15 year old counselor or 16 year old counselor gave me that's you know to understand myself and be able to say no that's a great message and what i said to her was really telling about me understanding myself sexually and where my sexual motivations are were and um and of course all these threads you know we move through them through our lifetime but um and i said to her but i have to get good at it i have to keep doing it so that i can get good at it and so you know for me that's a um a morsel of information of well where was my motivation sexually it seems like for sure in the beginning there were threads of being motivated by wanting this to be something that i could be accomplished at so that i could get you know attention praise acknowledgement um, connection you know and um and that's of course a very very normal one so um so that was really interesting for me to purposefully, as I went through this practice myself, to purposefully go back and remember that about myself and say, oh, wow, that's interesting. And then I became a Tantra teacher. <laughs> um, also interesting. So, uh, and of course, there are many other influences, which through other sexual experiences and other experiences through my life influenced all of these things. So it's not just one thing but there's interesting awarenesses there. And when we have those awarenesses, there's nothing that we we're, we're need to do about them, but they, what I hope that you'll do when you do this practice is really have compassion for yourself. You know, I'm not interested in blaming myself for being someone who thought that being good at kissing might get me attention and might give me some of the connection that I was craving. I have uh, tenderness and compassion for that young woman who um who was just discovering herself and didn't know how else to get what she needed and i can feel the threads of the tenderness of um you know the parts of me that are still working through that so that's what i want you to bring when you go on this exploration whether you're coming across 
uh, major traumatic experiences or whether you're coming across small aha moments about who you are and what and, and also those aha moments can be about pleasure you know um, I'll fast forward probably just a, a, a couple of years from from that experience and I had an experience where uh, I had a boyfriend in uh, early high school, maybe freshman year, and just, um, and he was extremely experienced and also very kind and very interested in my pleasure and very interested in exploring with me to help me find my pleasure. What teenage boy is like this? I don't know. So <laughs> hit the jackpot. So, so lucky. Um, you know, so those experiences I can look back and feel a lot of gratitude for that being an experience that played a role in my life and also was a huge building block in me having um, freedom to explore my pleasure and feeling safe to do that. So whether your experiences are uh, extremely challenging and traumatic that you're looking back at, whether they were maybe a little bit embarrassing and you feel shy about what your motivation was, or whether they are um, things that are exciting and luscious and like, yeah, I have always really enjoyed sex and I'm so glad I had these opportunities to explore. Um, what we really want to do is have acknowledgement, tenderness, kindness towards the tender person who had these experiences. And, um, and that's, you know, I, I think you know, listen as though your dearest friend was telling you, listen when you write your journals about this, listen as though your dearest friend was telling you, be so gentle with yourself. It can be so easy for us to take on the ideas of the culture and want to shame ourselves for decisions that we've made. And that is just not at all what this is about. And that wouldn't be helpful at all. So bring that tenderness as you discover, and there's nothing to do once you discover these things. It's just, uh, a new level of relationship with your sexual self. And I also want to add that if you do have trauma in your past, if you were introduced to sex in a traumatic way, or if you've had a rape experience, then I want you to consider speaking to your therapist or someone that you, perhaps you have someone in your life that you've been working with to get support through some of the trauma you've experienced. And if you don't, I highly recommend you look for someone to support you and you let them know that you're going to take on this journaling exercise and so that you have support if feelings come up in the process that may be um, really big and you may need some help digesting them. So that's really important. If you know that you're going to come across some trauma, as you write this, then I do wanna make sure that you are getting the kind of support you need, whether that's through a therapist or um, some other kind of modality that you know gives you strength and support as you go into difficult experiences, just to address that, because that may be true for some people. So I hope that you have a very interesting discovery and really orienting yourself to, I cannot, it's as if you're falling in love with yourself, right? I can't wait to get to know this person. Who are they? How did they become who they are? Oh, that was a hard experience. I feel so much tenderness and compassion for them. Or, wow, that was a beautiful experience. How lucky that they got that um, at some point in their life. So really bringing tenderness, care, and love to this um, being that you are getting to know through this journaling practice. And yeah, if questions come up, email us, info at embodytantra.com and um, make sure that you, if you want to register April 2nd, 2020, if you're watching this in time to register, you can um, join our mailing list, embodytantra.com, and there's a little bar underneath the big picture of my face where you can put your email address in, and or you can write us at info at embodytantra.com, and we will get you signed up. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>